All right. So welcome and thank you for joining us for how to get the most out of your holiday photos with Carol Volpe and Keith Walters. My name is Amanda McCarthy and I am the Assistant Director of Alumni Communications and Engagement at Geneseo. And before we get started, uh, just a couple of housekeeping reminders. If um, you're not speaking, please go ahead and mute your microphone so we can minimize background noise. And if you have any questions throughout the event, go ahead and enter chat. And again, please note today's session is being recorded so we can share it with those who can't be with us. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our presenters. Carol Volpe is a member of Geneseo's class of 1991, currently serves as the college's creative director, and she's also the owner of Hudson Street Studio, located in Avon. Keith Walters is a member of the class of 2011, and as the college's director of multimedia, Keith is responsible for many of those iconic Geneseo photos you see on the calendar, on social media, on the web. And Keith is also the owner of Keith Walters Photography and just opened the gallery in the Valley on Main Street in Geneseo. So Carolyn, Keith, so much for being with us here today. Uh, we look forward to hearing your tips and tricks. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, I'll start. Um, well, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, the holidays can be a stressful time for a variety of reasons, but taking photos um, can sometimes lead to that stress when uh, you think you have something lined up in your head and then you make the photo and it doesn't look at all like what you thought it would. <laughs> um, so we wanted to give you a few tips and tricks today um, to hopefully improve that. And again, this we're hoping that this will be driven we have some stuff to talk about, but if you have questions, please feel free to uh, interrupt and um, we'd be happy to answer those. The main things we wanted to talk about today um, were location, so where you're taking the photos, uh, posing, which is very important. So how you want your subjects, oh, how you want your subjects to, um, to look in the photo. Lighting, which is probably the most important thing um composition and then just some basic uh you know item or points around the gear that you use so just by a show of hands how many people are using um a camera other than a smartphone for these types of photos anybody sam is okay sam and james oh i realize some of you are um you don't have your camera on but okay <laughs> So most of these tips are going to be um, good for any type of uh, any type of camera. So whether it's a like DSLR, uh, a point and shoot, or a camera phone, um, the main thing is uh, good lighting, how to pose people. That's going to get you really far, and the rest of it is just kind of like icing on the cake. Um, so I'll start with um, location here. So as far as location, you have a couple options um, with family photos. A lot of people want to do them either at their house, in their yard, um, or at like a nearby park. Um, the main thing that you wanna focus on is finding an area that is free of distractions. Uh, so you don't want things like cluttering a room that might be kind of getting in the way. Uh, or if you're at a park, you don't want anything distracting in the background like a parking lot um, or um, a highway running in the back of the photos. Um, so my best uh, piece of advice for that is to find a local park that's quiet and away from other people and that also has some shade. Because if you're running into like a really sunny day, it gives you an option to put people in the shade um, to kind of give you a nice even light. And that's just like the, the best place to start with um, family photos. If you're working at your house, um, the front porch, if you have one, is also a great option because oftentimes that can be covered um, and there's steps. So there's ways that you can um, layer people. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Carol, feel free to Thank enter. You. Yeah, <laughs> Carol did a front porch session at the start of the pandemic. She offered these front porch sessions and went around and got some really great shots. I don't know, I Carol, what were you? Yeah, yeah I put a link in the chat for everybody. It's just a small um, gallery of images of just grouping of people, lighting situations, front porch. Seriously, when I when I did this front porch session, you know, I it was COVID, everybody wanted to do it. So I went around and, and did that. I never know where the sun is gonna be when I drove up to anybody's house. I was literally there for five minutes, not much posing, just 
five, five minutes literally and move on. And I don't know where the sun is at any given point when I drive there. So there's, I, I put a couple of those in the gallery just to show you that, you know, if you can find some shade, whether it's a front porch or a back deck or something like that, there, it, it just is, it's, uh, it makes a good spot even though you might not think so. Sometimes I do have to ask them to move some clutter quickly, you know, maybe some toys laying around or somebody's little car, little kid's car or something. But in general, you just m literally move a chair or something. It, it just is a little less distracting and uh, makes quick, good photos. Yeah. And so once you're at your location, you want to be thinking about, um, you know, what's in the background, because again, we want to be eliminating those distractions. So uh, you want a clean background, so whether that's just like trees or kind of an open field or just something that is not going to distract from the group photo element of that. Um, if you're at your house, like a cool accent wall, if you have like a wooden accent wall or a brick wall, that could also serve as a good background um, for whatever location you're shooting in. Or um, I'm a big fan of barns, so if you have like a, even if you had a utility shed or something in the background that has some character to it, if you shoot tight enough, you're not going to be able to tell that that's like a utility shed or, you know, so shooting tight is also a good, um, a good rule of thumb, but we'll talk about that in the composition part. Um, so that's location. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you pick a spot, just make sure it's not cluttered. Um, it's away from, you know, a lot of distracting elements and then you go from there. But uh, we wanted to move next into uh, the posing and Carol um, shared that link in the chat here. So hopefully everyone can open that that gallery and we can start looking at how to pose people because that's like one of the most important things. So I was thinking at the time when I put this together that you know you're home for the this may be a little bit different but you know when whenever you're together typically the holidays you're in groups of people and you might want to grab some family photos because this is the time normally that you're all together at one point in time, you know so but the issue is like um composing groups of big groups of people or just say hey everybody stand over here and we'll take your picture you know try to organize them I like to start with like a triangle shape um, and you have the tallest people kind of in the middle and work your way down it doesn't always happen you've got little kids life happens um, but I try you know and we've got three-year-olds and two-year-olds running all over the place you, you never know what you're going to get sometimes but um, the link in there will have some pictures I don't know if I can share my screen here uh, whoops, Amanda. <laughs> you should be able to now, Carol. Okay. So here you can see this. So for instance, I've got this grant, this extended family that wanted, can everybody see this? Okay. So you've got an extended family here and there's a lot of people, different ages, different heights, everything. So you have to try to figure, like I said, a triangle. If you see the two girls in the middle, at least it's asymmetrical, it's symmetrical, I mean, on either side. And your eye kind of leads you up to a point, even though the guy in the middle is lower. Um, you know, here's an example of grandma and grandpa and their kids and it just, they form that triangle shape. Um, it helps when, you, I personally prefer photos when you have like people sitting on laps or things like that, or you can, can you find something to sit on and layer it with somebody standing behind you or groups of people and even sitting down in front of you, um, in front of a bench if you have it. Um, let me just show you some other kind of grouping. Some people have to kneel, you have to sit down, but if you have them all in a line and sometimes that's all, I'm gonna show you an example of a line um, right here. I don't try to do this very often. I try to layer it. So, um, you know, we either scoot down, we've got the dog. This is in Boston. This is actually, a, she's an alum. This family here is a 1991, class of 1991 family. Um, but we brought the dog, you know, we kind of, we squat down, we kind of layer it a little differently. Here's another one. We've got, you know, this family with four kids and we try to try to make the triangle. This one was tough. The kids are all young. They're all running around, but we, we got it. Um, uh, another group of the grandparents and they have older kids, older grandkids, high school. And so, you know, at that point you're pretty tall. It's nice. It's nice when you have the, the option of little kids running around because uh, they're a little shorter. You can sit on laps and things, but sometimes you've got to kneel down. You've got to kind of work with what you have. Here's, a, here's inside at the Avon and grandma and grandpa um, just want a quick shot with their kids. So we try to, if you can see it's wider on the base and it goes up to a point um, and with a flash, very, very simple. 
another example of a triangle with three kids. And then we moved to the porch sessions. I would just literally drive up to their house and like, I don't, I don't know where the sun is. And here we go. Luckily, this one was in the shade. It was nice. It provided uh, that for us, but you just kind of group them. At the end of every session, I always do the hug shot, you know, one, two, three, everybody hug and see what happens. Usually these, these kids right here didn't love me because they're all their teen, teenage boys, but I got four boys. So, you know, I know how that is. Just different groupings. Oh, here's, you know, uh, porch session. So <laughs> this one, they, they wanted to do it in their back of their truck in their garage, you know, again, just trying to make fun of COVID or whatever, but porch, you know, have some fun with it different groupings. This is a, you know, this is a big family of four kids. There's a somewhat of a triangle, but you kind of lead your, your eye in a certain way so you can see things. So um, those are just some examples. You're more than welcome to go through them and just kind of see uh, composing. Any questions on that? Um, it seemed like a pretty consistent theme through that, like, the, you know, trying to find that triangle, um, you know, putting the taller people towards the middle and then kind of tapering down. Uh, and so even if we're, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. So even if we're using the couch, right, we don't want, want to all be sitting on the couch. We want people um, on the floor. And it, actually, I see, I tried to do couch with my kids. I should show you the outtakes that I tried this week, you guys. And I put the kids up on the arms, but that's the wrong way to do the triangle, right? Because then we're, we're more of a V. Yeah. You should have put the kids on the floor with the adults. I would in the, try it. You know? Okay. Yeah. I would I try it and see. Okay. So that, you know, Keith and I were talking yesterday, we were talking about on the couch, you're going to, you know, you're home for the holidays. You want to do pictures. Everybody sit on the couch because that's a nice centered place. You know, your, your trees next to the window. I'm literally sitting on here on the floor of, the, of my living room right now. My window is actually in front of me and I'm sitting this way because the lighting's better. But normally I'll show you it when I go, <laughs> when I sit at my work calls at Geneseo on Zoom, I'm sitting here and I'm like, it's dark. This is, they're always like, why are you sitting in the dark? Yep. It's literally me sitting in front of a window. And if I move here, the lighting is already a world of difference. You know, mm -hmm. I realize people don't put their Christmas trees in front of their living rooms. It, it, um, you know, but you could sit in front of the tree, around the tree, instead of like right in front of a window, because if you don't have a flash, you're probably going to get a silhouette, you know, of, of you around the, with the window all bright behind you. But go ahead, Lori, keep asking. Oh, no, that's cool. I just, I really, um, we, I had the kids home for Thanksgiving for like two hours. And we, um, I thought that we would try it and it worked horrible. <laughs> well, and so yeah. is your couch up against the wall too? Oh yeah, do you wanna see, I'll show you what, oh, uh, why aren't they? Because here? one thing you could do is also move the couch away from the wall and then have your kids stand behind. <laughs> yeah, um, look, do you wanna, oh, wait, let me make it bigger so you could really see. I really hated how this turned out, look. Whoops, I don't, did I, I'm not sure I shared the right thing, hold on. Yeah, look, see, that's bad, right? It's got all I mean, multiple sources of lighting going on. Yeah, there's... Oh, yeah. It's yeah. terrible. Well, this is a good segue into our next yeah. section, which is... Yeah, I could be your what not to do. <laughs> that's not true, Lori. And wait, but then at the end, I'll show you what I did do. I fixed it last night. So there's the what not to... I mean, I love that we were all together, but we're, eat, we're at all depths, all angles. And to me, some of it was the photographer. Like, I'd like to hear... If we're using like our, my phone and I'm having my mother-in-law take the picture, how, where do I tell her to stand? That's hard too, because I'm also, I'm very, um, you know, different body shapes. Like if, if you take a picture, if you take a picture of me at my widest point, it's a horrible picture, yeah. right? So That's one of the things that I love that Keith does is, where where do you take the pictures of our bodies right mm -hmm. like i want to see sam's full chest right because he's he's trim he's muscular right but you don't want to see that of all of it right there you go sam you got it <laughs> um yeah so one one uh, piece of advice is to never shoot up 
um, and to always shoot level or down. So I would say if you're giving the camera off to somebody to stand back and at the very least shoot like at level with the, with your subject's eyes, um, if not just like a tiny bit down, because you never really want to be shooting up at somebody. It's just not a very flattering angle. Nostrils. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to see up the nostrils or anything. Um, and then with phones nowadays, a lot of the technology is really good in them where that if, if you zoom in on your phone, you're not going to lose too much quality. So that's where if you stand back and then zoom in a little bit, you're going to eliminate those distractions on the edge. Like I think I saw a lamp on the left side of that couch. Um, Cropping then, is, a big, is a big tool that can be used really effectively. Right. You can do that after the fact too, like in any sort of photo editing software. Um, Cropping can fix a lot of problems, but if you want to get it right in camera, that's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, not sure if that answered your question, but all right. No, so, no, that was really, I, I see that the, I could have done a lot more with the grouping than sit on the couch so I can take your picture. Yeah. And do you have, um, I mean, I know a lot of these photos are very spur of the moment. Like even when I'm at my in-laws, it's like, oh, we never did a photo this year. Like everyone, let's get into the living room. And you're kind of just like working with what you have. So the biggest thing is um, if you're kind of in that uh, last minute pinch uh, to just try to get a clean, move some stuff around, take the extra couple minutes to get some of the clutter out of the way. And then at least at the very least, if the lighting's not great, at least the picture is like clean and there aren't distractions going on everywhere. If I walk into a house to do a family session, and let's say we're home for the holidays, I look for a big window. That's probably the first thing I'm going to look for, not knowing anybody's house at all. I would look for where is the light? Where Where is that light? And, and then yeah. I work from there. If I put you here with the light coming um, in front of you, what, what's behind you? Then I would start, you know, taking things, just moving or asking if I can, you know, pick up a few things or whatever. Again, you can't always do that. So cropping in that, in that sense can help, you know, if you know Photoshop, that's another bonus, but um, we, we're not going there today. But I think cropping, honestly, <laughs> you'd be amazed. I do a lot of sports shooting. And if you, if I shoot, sometimes my lens doesn't reach all the way across the field at times, but cropping makes it look like I'm right there and sometimes it's just magic so it can work the same here in family photos I think yeah um so that brings us to lighting which is probably the most important thing um the biggest so right now I'm I'm always really bad with my lighting on zoom calls I usually have like mixed light going on or I'm backlit which makes no sense because it's like my job to <laughs> light things well uh but I really liked Carol's kind of um demonstration of how things look, you know, backlit versus how she is right now with a nice indirect window light coming in. Uh, I have the same thing in my room right now. I have uh, two like amber lights on this one right in front of me. So if I were to turn this off, like the lighting is really bad where I am right now because there's a window off to my right. Um, and you can see like that white light going down the side of my face. The biggest thing is like you want to find that indirect soft window light and you want to work with that so you want your subjects to be facing the window light if that means moving some furniture around um i would say it's totally worth doing that so like even if i turn you can see so this is me turning to the right towards the window you can see how much better the light becomes as i turn towards it's the window that's better. like the biggest thing is find a window um and don't let like a, you know don't find a window with direct sunlight coming in Right now the sun is like off to the south. So there's just really nice, soft, uh, indirect light coming through. So that's if you're inside. Um, if you have no choice, if you're up, like your tree and your couch is up against the window and you really like the way it looks, you want a fill flash. So if your camera has a flash on it, I would highly recommend popping the flash up and using like an automatic mode. Most of the time it does a good job of filling the room and filling the faces so that you get both like the nice window light coming from the back, but your subjects aren't all in shadow. Um, does that make sense for the most part? All right, um, so that's inside. Uh, if you don't have um, a flash, you could buy, if you wanted to buy something um, to have on hand for the future, it's called a reflector. Um, and they're, they come like this, it's like a circle. Um, I have to turn my background off, but let me see here. 
I didn't want to do this. You're going to see the chaos that is my <laughs> toddler's living room. So, or guest bedroom. Let's see here. Okay. So you can see there's a window behind me, a window to the right. I have this light on. I have a lamp in front of me. You want to avoid mixed light too. So if you're in a living room, turn all the other lights off and use that window light. Um, if you don't have a flash, so say for instance, you're shooting a backlit subject, um, you could, if you have an extra set of hands, buy something called a reflector. They're like 10 bucks. They're super cheap. You can find them on Amazon and they unfold into this like circle like this. Um, and then this is like a five in one reflector. So there's a zipper uh, and you can have white, you can have gold, you can have silver, but basically the reflectors are serve as an extra uh, source of light. So what you would do is your family is in front of um, the window on the couch. There's light coming in from behind them. You would have somebody with an extra set of hands, or if you had like a table, you could prop this on. You set it up in front of them, and then the, the window light is going to bounce off of this and fill them. And you'd be surprised at how well it works. If you don't have one of these, you can use a bed sheet. Anything that's white uh, or silver will help fill that shadow detail that's being lost. Sometimes, yeah. Sorry. And sometimes there's one other thing, a little trick I've learned is I wear a white shirt to a lot of my um, sessions because the white shirt reflects off my, the sun sometimes the light reflects off of me and back onto people. So sometimes in a pinch that's, it, it works. <laughs> um, so questions on lighting inside. It's super challenging because I mean, in my house too is like very poorly lit all the time, uh, which is also funny. It's like, why would you? Uh, so sometimes if you don't have a window, uh, it's sometimes it, it's better to just get everybody dressed up to go outside. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you just may not be able to make it work inside. If that's the case, um, head outside and find like, if you have that front porch or you have any area in the shade, especially with steps that you can layer people. So you don't have that line that Carol was talking about. Um, maybe it's a picnic table out back or something. Right. Another, oh. Oh, I just want to say one thing about lighting, Keith, like two shears on the windows, clear, um, you know, shears on the windows soften light and rather than standing directly in front of a light with, with no shears is a, is a big one as mm -hmm. well. Um, and then as far as like outdoor uh, photos, finding shade or if it's a cloudy day, those are actually nice days to go out and make photos because you don't have very harsh shadows. Um, if you have people standing in the sun and it's like a high noon sun, you're going to get really deep shadows under their eyes. Um, if, if it's, um, you know, like noontime and the sun is really harsh, find some shade to put them in um, and then start turning their bodies. Like you can even do it with your hand. I'll do it with my hand sometimes when I'm outside. As you turn your hand, you can see how the light falls on it. So you'll be able to, you know, tell where to position uh, people. So you're always going to want to be, um, you know, facing away from the good light source as a photographer, you want your subjects facing into it. Um, so finding shade is a, is a good way to do that. A lot of Carol's photos, actually, let me pull that gallery up again. Uh, like you can see in the, the very first one, one of 56. Um, I wasn't there. So I don't know exactly. Let me go to it. Sorry. Yeah, Carol, do you want to share your screen one more time? Yes. Uh, share my screen. Yeah. Okay. All one right. So one of 50, this is like a prime example in the background. You can see it's clearly a sunny day. There's sun going through the trees. And if she were to put them out, like in the middle of the sun, it's not going to be as evenly lit as this. So what she did was she put them in the shade. And you can even see on the grass, there's some like sunspots. So you might need to adjust people. You don't want like little spots of sun to fall on people's faces. You want it to be pretty even and uniform throughout. Um, so she put them in the shade and facing, I'm guessing was it, yeah, same thing here. Here's another thing with lots of light spot scattered all the way around. You know, you, you, I tried to find it. I said, you know what, we, we'll put our blanket on the shadiest spot on this path because you can see there's plenty of sun patches but if you sit them in those sun patches and somebody's going to have a highlight here on their nose so try to keep them out of that or on right. their bald spot yeah 
<laughs> That's what I was gonna say that. Yeah, if you have somebody who doesn't have much hair, you especially don't want that to happen for sure. Because then it's gonna be like another sun in the picture. But yeah. Trying to find some other examples, most of them are porch. Sessions. Yeah, I mean, and otherwise, like, um, okay, actually, if you go back to that one with the sunflowers, if you can't find somewhere where there's shade, um, yeah, the two, it looks right like two girls with the sunflowers. This is full on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is full on sun. Um, what Carol did here was uh, she turned them away from the sun. So their their faces were facing away. So the sun is in the back and they're, you know, backlit really nice. And you can see um, the sunflowers have that really nice light going through the petals. This is like a last resort, I would say. Uh, and the sun needs to be a little bit lower in the sky because if it's too high, you're gonna get that, those spots like on their face and you're gonna get weird shadows. But if it's low enough, you can turn people's back to the sun um, and you can just overexpose the image slightly. Uh, and that will, it'll blow out some of the highlight detail. So what, it's probably like a blue sky, but- It is, yeah. Because you're, she it had overexposed in this instance, but it works because it's like a light, airy photo. Um, and because they're turned away, um, and Carol was probably wearing a white shirt, so. They, so they were, had a little bit of fill light on them. Uh, so yeah, that's another option that you can. Had I changed these two kids around, these girls around, the taller, I put the taller girl on that side on purpose to shade the shorter, the younger sister. Had I flipped them around, they would have had, the taller sister would have had sun on her face. So I did that intentionally. Um, so just, you know, it, it is, it does matter sometimes where you place paper, people, you know, lots of times I say, hey, put your, you know, you might have a tip of um, sun just on your nose. And I asked the girls to bring their hair in front of their face to, to block the sun off their face so they have no harsh shadows like across their chin or whatever in mm -hmm. their mouth. A lot of it is trial and error. I mean, like a lot of times when I get to a shoot, I don't know exactly how I'm going to be posing it's somebody or where <laughs> they're going to be facing. Um, oh, and that's the nice thing about digital is like, it's all free. You know, it's pixels are cheap. That's what they say. So like you can look at the back of your camera and you can say, hey, this isn't working um, and just reposition people or try something different. Uh, Carol, if you go back to that previous picture. This one in the studio? No, there was like oh. a group. It was outside. Um, I know these are all outside. Okay. I think it's the next page. Oh, this one? This one? Bottom right. The bottom right. So yeah, this is another example of uh, Carol finding like a clean background. Um, oh, yeah. then, but you can see how um, the sun is like, I wouldn't go any further than, see how the sun is like almost um, wrapping around uh, that girl's hair and like, it's just very close to hitting people's face. She has them turn just enough to keep the sun and those sunspots off their face. Um, you know, that being said, there are fun times when you can do, I, I put these in here because you have the sun behind you and do silhouettes and do fun little things that, you know, just goofy little things or whatever, just a different way. Maybe mm -hmm. it isn't always the faces, you know, it's expressions or just, you know, this is family, they're all cousins, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know these people. Um, and same thing uh, with the, you know, if you're outside too, you can use that fill flash if you have to put you know, your subject with their back to the sun, you can still use a fill flash and that will help a little bit to bring some of the detail on their skin back. Um, so that's an option too. Or you can use a reflector, which is great. And guys, there was a question in the chat. Um, do you still use a flash inside with lots of lighting? Yeah, you can. You certainly can. If you're finding that there's like small shadows, um, some shadow detail, uh, you can you can use a flash for fill. There's no you know real rule behind it. It's just whatever is looking good to you. Um, the one thing with flash is if you overdo it, uh, you can either get like kind of like those um, oil spots or you know it can just look kind of shiny. Um, so you want to be subtle with that if if you're using it. If you have the option to point it whether directly to the group or up, you know, bounce the light off the white ceiling above that, I would always try that first versus right yeah. directly pointed at them. So one thing you can do is um, the key is like indirect light is the, is the softest. Like you never really want to work with direct light right at somebody because it's the harshest type. Um, so if you have a, a flash that pops up, what you can do is bend a piece of white paper 
So the flash will shoot into the paper and bounce off of, bounce off of the paper, bounce off of the walls, and that's indirect light. And it's going to be much softer than like firing a flash right into people's faces, if that makes sense. Um, let's see here. As far as composition, are we good on lighting and everything? Any other questions here? Yep. Okay. So we talked a little bit about the composition, uh, how to, you know, position people and everything. But the main thing is, um, you know, the classic family photo is you want to shoot tight, which is what I've said several times already, eliminating the distractions. Uh, and then you can start, once you have like that, the safe photo, you can start to get creative, you know, like what Carol was saying with um, silhouetting people or shooting a little bit wider. Um, but for me, I'm always using like a mid-range zoom. Uh, so anything that's like greater than 50 millimeters uh, and I'll stand back and then I'll zoom in. And what that does is it kind of compresses the background, which kind of, it's hard to explain, but it like makes the background go out of frame and it makes your subject really stand out. So standing back and zooming in, if you have the space is the best way to eliminate. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best way to eliminate distractions. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> You know, uh, I guess we were talking yesterday, Keith, like, you know, sometimes you shoot wide, horizontal, sometimes eliminating the distractions is just turning it vertical, turn your camera vertical yep. and, and, and see what happens. Try not to uh, cut off like feet or hands or anything. Um, Cause it, the picture could look great, but then like, if you have like a hand missing or like a foot, it might just look kind of incomplete. So pay attention to the small details too, as you're composing your image. And if you're like afraid to shoot too tight, uh, a lot of the cameras nowadays have like a high enough megapixel count where that you can, you can crop in after the fact. So you have more control over it um, if you don't want to risk cutting off any extremities. Uh, and then if you're shooting, like if it's just you and your family, and you don't have an extra set of hands, uh, bring a tripod. You can put your camera on the tripod and every camera has a self timer feature. Uh, it's either like two seconds or 10 seconds. I would recommend the 10 second one. Uh, otherwise you're gonna be like sprinting and redoing it over and over and over again. Uh, and they do make remotes. Like a lot of cameras now have apps and you can like have your phone in your hand. And you can press the button when you want it to take a picture or yeah, on your, uh, does it do that on the Apple watch? Yeah, the Apple watch has a timer. Oh my gosh. And I actually, I can see it from the finder. I can see it here too. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I gotta get an Apple Watch. <laughs> the Apple Watch is really great for that. Yeah. Uh, and let's see here. They also make remote shutter releases. So that would uh, like kind of sit on top of your camera and plug in. So it's like a, a little clicker, almost like a remote control. Um, it's basically a low tech version of what uh, the, the Apple Watch does. So there are several ways. Uh, if you don't have the clicker, you can just use the internal timer or you can go high tech and use your Apple Watch. Um, yes. How do you uh, get it to like focus? It, like, so I, I have to do self timer. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you want it to focus like before? Right, so you, I, want like, to focus, you want people's eyes and face to be sharp in any sort of portrait mm -hmm. work. That's where people's heads go, they go or your eyes go to, you know, the, the head and the eyes in the photo. So what you'll do is you want like a single focus. Um, every, most cameras will have like a single focus or like a servo action mode, which is kind of like a continuous focus where like if you hold the shutter down halfway, it's going to track your subject. You want the single focus. So like you'll lock focus, let go, and then you'll go and stand with your family and then take the picture. And it'll get you too. like, it'll focus on like, yep. when I jump yeah. In, like, focus on. yeah. So um, if you're shooting, like if you're zoomed in and like not getting too technical, but if you're shooting at like an aperture value, that's like five, six or higher, everything's going to be sharp. So if you're standing next to them, you're going to be in focus. Okay. You no, know, discounting that number. Like, even if you don't know what that number means, if you're, if you're uh, composing the image and there's like a space for you where you're going to go stand, if your family's in focus and then you go stand there, you'll be in focus too, for the most part. Did I miss anything, Carol? Or I don't think so. I think that 
I'm hoping everybody has questions. What are people's I, biggest challenges? Yeah. So a lot of your pictures, most of your pictures, Carol, are the people's full body, right? Uh, I put a lot of them in that gallery, but I really love go getting up close. You know, I have a, a, a lens that I like the, the soft, the background to be softer mm -hmm. so that it stands out. Like num I'm looking at number 35. Okay. So when, I mean, when I look at a Christmas card, like I have my sister's Christmas card here and you can see it's them standing, right? And she has adult children. So yes. they're all pretty big, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I want to see their faces. And sometimes yeah. when you, especially for, you know, younger kids, so is it the same, um, is it the same setup with everything? It's just your, you know, um, so a lot of my family pictures, I always, in my head, I'm thinking full half close up. So I want to get everything. I want to get like halfway up or three quarters. And then I want to get right in there. I left a lot of the close ups out because we were talking about not cutting off extremities. So, um, but obviously Yes, get in tight. I, I, you know, people do want to see faces. Sometimes, you know, I tend to be a shooter who shoots further away normally. I know I have the resolution in my camera when I shoot to, to, to crop in if I want to. Not always the same effect though, because um, if I'm closer, it compresses it and I can, with certain lenses, I can get that. Right. That same day off. that we lined up in that crappy manner on the couch, I took a selfie of the four of us to post on Facebook the lighting is so much better. You can see our faces. We're actually all smiling. So <laughs> I've actually some Christmases used those outtake selfies because they actually, to me, they more reflect my family. That's just, you know, our personality. But I like to see the pictures that are closer. That's interesting too. I didn't, I see, I don't have, I just use my phone. So I didn't think about how Sometimes, like on some of your porch pictures, you could crop away the whole porch and you still have Absolutely. gorgeous composition. And I know I I do that. I just don't know. I didn't want to put like. 400 in here so I was trying to be mindful but but you're absolutely right like I will I could crop in or I always take far middle close to get to get options for me and, and people like certain things better you know if you're getting a five by seven you don't want them far away because you can't see them you know so if you you want them close up so you know things like that so I try to get all, everything when I'm taking a family shoot yeah and if you're shooting close-ups it, it definitely does help to be it's going to be much harder to get a close-up image if you're all in that line so like it it almost like encourages people to get nice and close which is like that you know it's the family thing like you get close to each other and then you zoom in oh it, it totally yeah. changed how the picture i i guess i could show you that one it, it totally changed how our picture looked mm -hmm. now i gotta find it any other while you're looking any other questions it does look like there's one in the chat um regarding photos in front of christmas trees what recommendations do you have for lighting oh yeah there it is See, and we're all in a stupid line again, but what a different... But it's from a different angle. I like the angle. Yeah. I like the dog, too. I mean, <laughs> I, like, I like everybody in it. But I like how I'm holding his face. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did think about making that one my card. Yeah. That is not what I... That's not what I chose. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, there, the Christmas tree question. I can't see it in the, in the chat. What was that again? I can't. You're muted. <laughs> uh, regarding photos in front of Christmas trees, what recommendations do you have for lighting? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would uh, say if the Christmas tree is in a dark area, um, I would try to use a flash. Um, or if you're, one thing you could do, um, you could put your camera on a tripod and you can try, this is difficult, but you could try to slow your shutter speed down a little bit and it would require everyone to be super still. Um, so what's happening is if, if you're lowering your shutter speed, um, the camera is gonna have an opportunity to bring in more light. And if it's darker in that room, but that's like a softer kind of, you know, ambient light, it might turn out okay uh, if you lower the shutter speed a little bit. But uh, if that's the case, you all have to be really still. Otherwise, I would just use um, like a fill flash. Um, the other day, actually, it depends. The other day I was uh, 
photographing something for the alumni magazine. And we were in the planetarium, which was pitch black. And I was using my off-camera light. Uh, and even the off-camera light was, it was just too strong because I had to shoot in such a dark area. So I used my iPhone, the flashlight on my iPhone to light the subject and it turned out great. So, you know, just play around with that type of stuff. Um, you know, you might be able to use an iPhone or a flashlight or just something. Uh, it depends on where, you know, where the Christmas tree is in the house. Can you move the Christmas tree in front of a window or next to a window? Face the window? Yeah. And if it's in a dark, and then it thinks about grouping them and like where the, if, if it is next to a window, many times it can be, you know, is it near a window? Can you, can you group people around that window? Um, right. And it also depends on the time of day. So like if it's near a window and um, this, you know, there's better indirect light at one point, you know, part of the day, take the picture then. Um, versus like if there's like really harsh light coming in behind you, you're going to want to avoid that. Five o'clock at night when it's dark out now. Yeah. That's, I would say the flash is probably the best idea. The, the other way you can get a bigger flash is like put it behind a white sheet, your flash behind a white sheet or your flash in front of, behind a reflector, reflector, what, what Keith was showing you earlier. It kind of, if you have this little flash here and it boom, but if you have it behind a reflector, it's like, boom, you know, it has, it gives you more light. It's with another little trick or option to kind of increase the light that you have. Yeah. It does make the noise boom too. As you <laughs> That's all I could think of. <laughs> Uh, uh, I see. What about taking an outside photo for a holiday card that doesn't involve people? For example, a tree. Do you have any su uh, suggestions? It depends on um, my biggest suggestion with that is to kind of have the holiday card, like the end results of your finished holiday card in mind. So if you want text to go on that picture, compose the picture so that, you know, you can put the text on there in a spot that's not going to be too busy. Cause like if you're shooting a tree really close up, there's gonna be branches everywhere. And then like putting cop, you know, any sort of copy or text over that is gonna look really busy versus like if you shoot a little bit wider and you have some empty negative space to put the copy on, um, that's a good way to approach it, I'd say. A lot of people like to do their pets, take their pets too at Christmas. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, uh, basic lighting kits. That's a good question. Um, depends on your budget, uh, but you, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I'm gonna go grab my little handy light that I like. I'll be right back. Hold on. Uh, do so. You could go continuous lights, or you could go. Well, you know what? If you're shooting exterior, you probably can't use, you know, continuous lights. They sell, uh, what Carol's gonna show you, they sell pretty reasonably priced, um, like handheld, yeah, these little strobes here. Well, this one? Yeah. I have this uh, one. And I don't own that kind, so I don't know, like what's the ballpark price range for that? Probably about $250, but it comes with this. You need to stand, or I don't even use a stand. I'm kind of my stand, or I find a family member nearby to hold it for me, the human light stand if I need to. Yeah. Um, but and you really it, only need one. You, you can do. get away with a lot with one, with one of those. Um, so it would be an investment. But... Yeah, this is a flashpoint. Um, yeah, I guess my biggest piece of advice is like, you know, if you're going to invest in that type of lighting to get a decent one off the bat, because like you are like, oh, this is a great deal. And then it comes and you find it's probably going to be underpowered and it's going to be difficult to light a subject outside. So I would it's say fun. like, yeah. Best value. That's a great, you know, light that Carol mentioned. Do you want to type that in? I like, will. Yeah. What kind it is. Mm -hmm. And do they make smaller versions of that? They might. That after that, it's on. It's on your camera, like the the speed lights. I'm looking for it now. I'll grab it. What else we got, Sam? Any questions? Um, I was going to ask about the, uh, like exposure inside kind of for like 
portraits of people like I was going to ask about aperture like what what where do you want your aperture to be because like I've been shooting at like on the I, so my dad had me take pictures for for him for his birthday he like got up and he got dressed in a suit last night made me take pictures of him and like so it's night outside so the only light I got is like in, inside and I was like I was like running at like I think I was four four point five maybe mm-hmm. I might have got into five six I'm not quite sure um but they just didn't like look like how I wanted them to be. Mm-hmm. But I just yeah. didn't, I, so I didn't know. Like, so inside, in um, if you're shooting like just a single person, uh, photographing a single person inside, you could probably get away with going uh, with a, you know, a lower aperture value. So like even 2.8, cause that's gonna let more light in. Or I think your lens is 4.0, right? Yeah, it only goes to 4.0. Yeah, so. Um, and if you only had like one light in the house, it's probably challenging. So you want to position your subject in the best spot in the house where you're seeing. The, the biggest thing is visualizing that light hitting their face. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it's like what I was doing before yeah. with this. You know, so you want to put them in a spot where like the most light possible is, you know, falling on their face. Uh, and then inside, if it's dark, especially, you probably want to shoot a you know f4 if you can all right i know we have camera it's f4 so yeah yeah and then i was gonna ask about hey jeez chill out um sorry the the ups guys here so they're gonna freak out um yesterday i had um six packages delivered by four different carriers and I felt really ashamed of myself. No, that's awesome. (laughs) I had the same sort of day. Like I sit by my front window, here comes UPS, here's FedEx, here's a postal service. I got some random budget van. I do support small business. Like that was just all stuff for my, my gallery space, but like, Oh, I I make it a point to support small business. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Total, uh, All right, he's gone, so this should be good. Um, <laughs> my other question was, so, like, he's got a pretty prominent, like, he's balding quite a bit. So, like, when I, like, was positioning him, like, um, with, like, the lights, it was just, like, reflecting, like, so hard. Like, <laughs> I'm yeah. just roasting him right now. But it, You're recording know, this, right, like, Amanda? Listening. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So again, you could use um, this reflector and uh, you could use it almost as like uh, a scrim or a bed sheet. And that's going to help diffuse some of that light. It's going to make it a little bit darker. Um, Yeah. yeah. So the key is diffusing the light. So if you had like your brother uh, holding a bed sheet up or something to help soften that, you know, light reflection, that might help too. All right. Any other questions? Are we helpful? I hope we're helpful. Yeah, I hope we're free to email me anytime or Keith. Yeah. We love talking about this stuff, don't we, Keith? Oh, we do. We definitely (laughs) do. So. Well, thank you both so much. Um, I know I found it helpful. I'm sure everybody else did. And thank you all for joining us. Um, and I hope you go out and take some great photos. This weekend, yeah. sure. <laughs> the biggest thing, if there's one takeaway, it's find good light. Mm-hmm. That's it. Where to put a, position them. Yep. Thank you both. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Take care. Thank you guys.